Hello, and welcome to creating an encrypted drive with Veracrypt. So our basis here will be to actually make an encrypted drive using a file. We are not going to encrypt an entire hard drive in this tutorial. We're just going to use a file and then mount the file as the encrypted drive. So our first mission is we need to get a place to put that. Let's keep it simple and put it right on the desktop here. So we'll just right click new folder, click that. And then I'll rename it to encrypted drives. Now you may place this file that we're going to create anywhere you want, as long as you have read write permissions. You could put it on an external USB drive. You could put it on like your documents folder if you wanted to put it in there. But just to keep it simple, we'll put it in this folder called encrypted drives here on our desktop. Second thing to do, of course, is run Veracrypt. If you have not yet installed Veracrypt, a link will appear up above here where you can go and see my previous tutorial where we installed it. But once you have it installed, if you have it in the taskbar, you obviously could just click the icon in the taskbar. In this case, what I'm going to do though is run it from the Windows key just to make it easier to find if you don't have an icon on the taskbar. So hit the Windows key and type V E. R and Veracrypt should show up. If you need to type a couple other characters, just go ahead and continue typing Veracrypt and eventually you'll get the match there at the top. Uh, make sure that it's selected. As you can see under best match, it is selected. Hit enter and Veracrypt will run. So here is the Veracrypt UI. What we are interested in is create volume. Click create volume and that will run the volume creation wizard. Now you have several options here, three. What we want is the first option that is already selected, create an encrypted file container. As I said before, you can encrypt a non-system drive or the system drive. If you actually want to encrypt the actual Windows 10 partition or Windows 7 partition, you can do that. We're just going to make a file in this tutorial to keep it simple. Click Next. And for right now, we're going to make a standard Veracrypt volume. I will have a tutorial later to show you how to make a hidden volume. You can actually hide another drive inside of this drive, and people won't be able to see it unless you give them the right password. Pretty interesting feature. But for now, we'll keep it easy and just make a standard Veracrypt volume. Click Next. Now we have to tell Veracrypt where we're going to put this file. Click Select File. Now what we want to do is we want to navigate to our encrypted drives folder there. So I'm going to click desktop, encrypted drives, double click that folder. And then for file name, we'll just choose an easy name like an encrypted drive. Click save. You do not need an extension. Click save. Do not save history. It is generally not a good idea to save history. There's no reason to let someone that's doing an examination on your computer to know what the names of your drives were. So we just will never save history in my tutorials. We would never do that. Click Next. The encryption algorithm that we're using is AES, which is the most recommended encryption algorithm, mainly because it is hardware accelerated on most modern processors, i7s, etc. So we're going to use AES. Uh, Veracrypt defaults to 256-bit AES with XTS mode, which means it actually has a little extra swizzle to make it harder to crack. Uh, this is good. 256 is good up to top secret level in the US government. So it should be a decent algorithm for what we're doing. And the hashing algorithm is SHA-512, and we have no arguments with that either. So we can actually leave both these things alone. Click Next. Now you have to pick how big you want your drive to be. The bigger the drive is, the longer this is going to take because it needs to write data across the entire drive to make it difficult for someone to tell, well, what's encrypted and what isn't. So it basically will automatically set the drive up with data all across it. So it, well, for lack of better, like I said, it's harder to see what's encrypted and what isn't. So in this case, we're just going to pick gigabyte and pick one gigabyte. 
Now remember, it's going to take up the entire space that we assign. So you want to make sure that if you, you got to have enough space for that, right? Two, you don't really want to do what they're saying there about a sparse file container. Generally, you want to go ahead and just let the thing take up all the space in one fell swoop. You don't want to only use what you're going to need per se. That's what a sparse file is. Nah, it's probably better to let it go ahead and just take up the whole thing. Again, makes the drive a little bit faster because it doesn't have to keep reallocating free space. And number two, it just makes it easier to hide all your stuff per se. Click next. For our password, we should pick at least 20 characters. I would say longer than that. Uh, I would also recommend using a pass phrase so it's harder to, well, for lack of better, someone to break. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use password one. Uh, we don't really need to do anything fancy here, so I'm just going to use capital P A S S W O R D one, capital P A S S W O R D one. You may put in whatever you want. Veracrypt will complain when it sees that we've only done a password that's short, but for our purposes here, we don't need a super secure one. We're just doing it for a tutorial anyway. But yes, in the real world, you want to use at least 20 characters. Your maximum password length is 64. I would always recommend, again, using a passphrase to make it easier for you to remember what it is. But remember, don't pick a phrase that's like a common quote. You know, don't go say, I'll be back, you know, that would be bad because that's in dictionaries and people know what that quote is. So you want to pick something that's a phrase, but not something that just anybody could figure out. How about picking a whole bunch of random words or something like that? That would work pretty well. Later on, I might do a tutorial on a thing called Diceware. And Diceware lets you roll dice to pick words in a giant list. That's an interesting way to make a passphrase. That way you have a bunch of passwords, but there isn't anything in the real world that someone would know that would, you know, like a movie quote that would know what that phrase came from. So next, we are going to use the personal iterations multiplier, the PIM. What this does is it iterates that password a number of times to, again, make it harder for someone to be able to crack it, either through brute force cracking or through a dictionary attack. So in this case, let's go ahead and select Use PIM. And we'll go to Next once we did that. It'll, of course, complain about the short password, but that's okay for our purposes. We'll just hit Yes. So now we have to choose what the number of iterations will be. Uh, the default iteration value is 485 if you don't set something. What we'll do is we will set it to 600. You will have to remember that number. You will have to remember that number because you'll have to enter it when you go to mount the drive. But this is good because again, this adds one more thing that you have to know to mount the drive. And it, someone might be able to figure out what your passphrase is, let's say, or in the case of my horrible password, their password one, they might figure that out. But what they're not going to figure out easily is that personal iterations multiplier. And because of that, they, even if they have that password, it's going to make it really hard for them to mount it. Now you see the little option here to display your PIM. If I click on that, it'll show that I put in 600. Generally, you never want to do that. You never want to display your passwords or your PIM. And the reason why is in case you've ever been infected by malware and you didn't know it, there are malwares that actually will take screenshots of your computer. And if it's taking screenshots of your computer or someone's walking behind you, right? Shoulder surfers, right? If you click on that, someone can read what that PIM is or they could read your password. So generally, you never want to display it. Again, it doesn't matter here because it's just going to be thrown away when we're done with the tutorial anyway. But in the real world, please try not to ever display your PIM or your password. It's just safer that way. Click Next. It'll complain about PIM being larger than the Veracrypt default. Yeah, if you actually told this thing to have like 6,000 rather than 600, that's going to take significantly longer to boot and to mount. But in this case, 600 isn't going to take that much longer, and it's over what the default is, so it should be good. We're fine. Click OK. Then we need to pick the format. Uh, since this is a one gigabyte volume, I'm just going to go ahead and pick NTFS. You could pick FAT. It's unusual to use FAT anymore unless you really, really need to. XFAT is a format that was made by Microsoft for external hard drives, like SSDs and things like that. 
Feel free to use XFAT if you want. It is actually made for external drives, like what we're doing, because this basically is an external drive. I usually just use NTFS. Um, it works fine, and it has all the attributes, ability to save all the attributes. So click NTFS, select NTFS. Leave the cluster size the default. You don't need to change that for this tutorial. And like I said before, I prefer that you didn't use dynamic. There isn't anything per se wrong with it, but again, you should probably let it allocate all the space it needs up front. Now we need to move our mouse around, do some random mouse movements, and you can see this thing collecting random data from the mouse movements there. The reason you need to do that is to make it so your key is more randomized and the system is more randomized that you're going to use to, crypt, you know, to encrypt it. This makes it, again, harder for someone to actually hack into it or brute force attack it. Once that green bar is completely filled, you are good to go. Click Format. And it'll take a very short time. I'm on an SSD, so it doesn't take too long. And once it's done, It'll ask you for administrator permissions. Click yes. And in a couple more seconds, it'll be finished. And you're good. You should get the message, the Veracrypt volume has been successfully created. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, that actually might take a little longer. It's OK. Or it might be a little shorter. That's OK, too. Click OK. The wizard asks you, do you want to go back and make another volume? Nope, we do not need to do that in this tutorial. Click Exit. And we are now ready to mount our file as a drive in Windows. Part one of that operation is to select a mount point. In this case, we'll select D. Seems like a reasonable mount point. I generally don't use A or B just because those used to be used for floppy drives and I still have weirdness on my own. That's my own personal thing there. I prefer to use D to start off with, but you may use any of the letters that are showing up here. We'll just use D. If you don't have a space for D here, you might need to go down to a different one. That's fine. So D is good for us. What we need to do now is select the file that we just made. So click Select File. We'll go to the desktop. Go to our encrypted drives folder. And inside the encrypted drives folder, we will find that file and encrypted drive. Again, we do not need to have a file extension on this. It is, it's irrelevant in TrueCrypt. It does not need a file extension. It could have a .hc extension if you wanted it to, but you don't need to have that. So just select that file that you made in encrypted drives and click open. Now you need to mount the drive that you have selected. Click Mount. And it gives you a dialog box asking for your password and your PIM. So for our password, go ahead and enter password one that we just used. And we need to enter our PIM. So we click Use PIM and type in the PIM that we put in, which was 600. At least that's the one I used, 600. In a later video, I will go through and do things like key files, etc. But again, for this video, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So password one in the password box, 600 in the PIM box, and click OK. It'll take a couple seconds. And Veracrypt will mount the drive for us. And we should see it here. So in our GUI, We'll actually see the drive, the volume, what file it was, the size of the volume, what algorithm it's using for encryption, and the type of volume. In this case, it's not a hidden volume, it's a normal volume. So how do we use it? Easy. Open Windows Explorer. And if you scroll down to this PC, you will see your local drive. And then right below it, you should see your encrypted drive. Again, depending on what drives you have mounted, it might be farther down. But your encrypted drive should be right there. Just click on D. And this is your drive. It acts just like any other drive that you would mount to Windows. So if you wanted to add a new file, you would just say New Text Document. And now you have a text file. You can open it. Edit it and save. 
And that file actually is like any other text file. Pretty much can put anything you want on this. It acts just like any kind of normal file or any kind of normal drive. Uh, one thing that might be true on yours, since you just made this encrypted drive here, it may actually not have a name. If it doesn't, you can always just right click on the drive that you made, select rename, and then name it whatever you want. In this case, I'll leave mine set to encrypted drive. And you're good. We now have an encrypted drive in Veracrypt. I'll go ahead and close my Windows Explorer here. Now, one thing. Once you're done using this drive, you need to dismount it. So we go down here to dismount and select that, and it will undo our mount. Uh, you want to get in the habit of not leaving your encrypted drives mounted when you go to leave home and things like that. You want to make sure that they're unmounted, they're dismounted. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and close Veracrypt now. And we're good. Thank you very much. Remember to subscribe, and I appreciate your time. And hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.